Hey guys, Robert and Ingrid here, and we're about to go see Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Because why? Well, we're going to be seeing um, Across the Spider-Verse. Although you'll probably see that video before this one. Mm-hmm. But, so this will be your first time watching it all the way. Yes, I've seen bits and pieces of Spider-Verse before, and it's sort of one of those things where, oh, it's so good, I need to get around to doing this, and then it just ends up slipping my mind because real life happens, so it's good to finally be able to get around from this. I'm aware of, like, some of the plot points and whatnot, mm -hmm. and I'm aware of just how much of a juggernaut it's been for inspiring oh, yeah. a new wave of animation. So. Oh, yes, yeah. I mean, you have Puss in Boots had a similar animation. The Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem is going, is going to have that. Mm -hmm. Now... Have you played the Spider-Man games? Uh, not really. Oh, okay. Never mind that. You, you watch my playthrough of them, though, right? I've seen bits and pieces of it, yeah. All right, because, well, this is where we're getting Miles, and this one is going to be a bit closer to Ultimate Spider-Man, where, well, well, you'll see what happens. But trust me, we'll see you guys after we're done, and I think you're going to love it. I don't okay. doubt it. Hey, guys. Robert Inger here, and... Still one of the best movies we've ever seen. And, oh, I forgot! It goes right into one of the other animated movie things. <laughs> the Spider-Ham. But seriously, it's still one of the best superhero movies. Yes, Nearly that was flawless incredible. writing. Nearly flawless writing and absolutely revolutionary animation. Yeah, but... Uh, Miles, first of all. The Star what Wars a Miles. character. What a character. They perfectly... T okay, ben, while Bendis and Sarah Pacilli might have created... Or however you say her last name. Might have created the characters... These guys really expanded it. Hmm. They really made him work. Also, the fact that we we open out like, okay, let's start from the beginning one last time. Yes. Like, yeah, I mean, as we talk, we find out about Peter Parker of this world. Has it perfect? He's yes. the ace. He has everything going. He's adored by everyone. He's blonde. Yeah, he's sort of supposed to be like, oh, okay, here is sort of the a fully spider realized. Yeah, a fully realized Spider-Man. And then he has some goofy stuff like the dancing. Like, yeah, we don't talk about that. Mm -hmm. Things like that. But so we go. And then Miles, normal day until he just randomly gets bitten. Which that's definitely one of the case where you're like, Ugh. Uh -huh. which apparently they're going to resolve in the next movie. I can't wait for that. But mm -hmm. but I like how the bite isn't even that important. Something that incidentally happened while he was right, doing some tagging. Yeah, while he was making some graffiti with his uncle. Who Prowler in this was handled very well. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, he's just this cool, chilled uncle, like, hey Miles, you know, it's like Yeah, which makes a lot of sense because his given dad what is, happened, yeah, his yeah. dad's a cop. Very embarrassing. Uh-huh. Oh boy, I'm sorry. The moment we're like on the speaker saying, Come on, say it. It's, it's like just, it's like, uh, dude! That's just exactly the right kind of parental embarrassment. Exactly. But, and then he meets Gwen over there. I like how Gwen was brought in early. Yeah. And everything, you know. It's later explained that she was literally sent in the last week. Mm -hmm. And I just like it all. She's just this nice, cute girl mm -hmm. at first. And then once the powers start kicking, I love how in this game it's focused on the sticking. Yes, it's like, oh gosh. It could have been is... anything else, but in this case, it could have been the spiders. No, it's the sticky fingers. Yes, and that just sort of leads to kind of just very, very awkward segments. Especially when he's trying to take his uncle by, like, the shoulder thing. Mm -hmm. Hey. And so he's always he doing, like, oh. oh. <laughs> yep. And that leads her up into punk like hair. Mm -hmm. Which I like that actually, it led to that. Yeah. Like, nice hair. You don't get to talk about my hair. Mm -hmm. And then. Peter dies. Mm -hmm. Gets killed by the King Ben. I love it how when we see him, he's so first he's all like, "Hey, I don't do what you know." Like he's ready to dismiss him at first, but then once they feel they have the same, you know, fire sign, he's like, "You're like me." He's so quick, like, uh, "Like you don't have much of a choice, kid, but I'll help teach you." Mm -hmm. I love that, don't you? How he's just so yeah. quick to just be like, "I'm gonna teach you." Uh huh. But um, and then I'm sorry. See, this is hilarious, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that at the very end, but, um, so yeah, that's what led to him getting taken. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, um, anyway, so, and I felt, you feel so bad after every, you know, when he dies, you're just like, oh. Mm -hmm. And then when Peter B. Parker shows up and how, one, well, I always find it so funny how people exemplify how he's Jewish because of the wedding, you know, got mm -hmm. married. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, they don't even mention much else about him being Jewish, but once you see that, you're like, oh. Yep, now we know that, exactly. 
Exactly, and how he's now he's been at it longer than the other Peter, which makes you wonder: Would the other Peter have gone through all this if, say, his Aunt May died? It's definitely an interesting question. The other one was at for 10 years. The one, Peter B, who's been at it for um, 22 years. Yeah. So, yeah, I find that interesting. But, um, but again, there's just so much throw at you, but it's done in a way that works. Now, granted, three of the Spider-Man kind of get the short ship by comparison. Because they kind of show up later and not... And more like side characters in the But they still get plot. enough. They still get more elements compared to others who are just there briefly. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll leave it this way. They don't get as much as the two Spider-Man in No Way Home. Mm -hmm. But they get just enough. It's not like a glorified cameo. Yeah, they do still play some significant roles. Exactly. But, um, but yeah, so Peter B., he's a jerk at first. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you agree? Like, he is an ass. Yeah. But... He eventually is able to come around after he starts working with Miles. Because first he's going to use Miles as a means to an end. Let's be honest. Yeah. All of his teaching was sarcasm. Like, oh, yeah, there's this, there's that. Like, he doesn't want to deal with it. Mm-hmm. There's a guy who didn't want to have kids, which is why his and MJ's uh, marriage fell apart. Mm-hmm. But, um, but eventually, though, they decide, let's work together. We got to get a new goober. <laughs> I love it. It's like, oh, it's always thing. I just call it a goober. It's like, it's a technical thing, you call it a gizmo. Yeah, basically, oh, they someone said, like, gizmo, goober, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, I do like it how once they get to Alchemax, oh, for the Kingpin, good lord, Kingpin's backstory is tragic. Yes, very. It, he's still in the wrong. Yeah, like, he's still definitely in the wrong. It's just like, I understand your pain, but this is not how you do... You yeah, because basically, it. his wife and son see him threat strangling Spider-Man. They run off and get into a car crash and die within minutes. It's like, no, this isn't sometime later. This is right away. So he's seen him like, wait. Yeah. I'm just like, when I first saw him here, I was like, I was jaw dropped that yeah. they went there. Yeah. But, um, oh. We didn't mention about earlier was Miles. Miles is the kind of guy who wants to be normal. He wants to have this to the point where when he's in this prestige school that he got, earned his way in there, he decides to try and flunk out. But even that, he's, he's bad at flunking. He deliberately gets zero out of 100, and the teacher's just like, if you were just doing this as a blind, randomly picking answers, you'd get roughly 50%. The fact that you knew which ones to pick, the fact that you knew which ones to pick <laughs> to get a zero... To get an absolute yeah, he went, zero means that you're smarter than you think. So get him a hundred. Uh -huh. I'm just like, oh, because again, it's just like, you're bad at failing. What does that say, right? You're bad at failing. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to get that out of the way. But, but yeah, once they go and make their way to Alchemax, that's when things start to really pick up, especially mm -hmm. once we meet Olivia. Olivia. A.K.A. Olivia Oct Octavius. Yes. Catherine Hahn was perfect. Because at first, you're just like, when we first see her in this documentary, we don't even see her last name. We just see Olivia. And I love that. Mm -hmm. And then when we first see all oh, her, she's like this ganky lady. You know what I mean? Just like, ooh, wow. But then eventually when she says, like, you don't know how it's going to feel. And I can't wait to watch. You're just like, oh, shit. I was like, what's your name? Dr. Olivia Octavius. That's when you're like, again, a lot of jaw-dropping moments in this movie. Mm-hmm. But especially that, I mean, she stole the show, in my opinion. She was definitely I'm not gonna the deny highlight. That. She was, yeah, she Especially how chatty she was. You're know, like, she sold this flirtiness with him almost. Like, oh, you got this, Peter? Oh, you're chatty. Peter, you didn't tell me you had an invisible friend. Mm -hmm. It's just liveliness to her, you know what I mean? It's just like, she's different from Alpha Molina's from Spider Man 2. But, oh, yeah. And yet. They work to get at the same time in their same ways. Wouldn't you say it's like Yeah. She, Melina had a similar kind of a jokey charm to him. Mm-hmm. And but she amps it up because she's a comedian, but she's still also just a sinister. Mm -hmm. Even when she says something like, You can't take her give me that. It's proprietary. She yeah. still says it with this sinisterness to it. Like the yeah, line is silly. But she's saying this in a way like, Yeah, give me that back. Which leads them to meeting up with Gwen. And then they decide to meet the most awesome Aunt May. Mm-hmm. I think Aunt May's the best Aunt May, wouldn't you say? I'm not going to deny that. Because one, she knows who Peter is. She's been in on it with him. She is just awesome. To the point where she even hits 
Um, one of the bad guys out of like, I said, get out of my house. Mm -hmm. She is a badass. Directed to the point where Octavia said, my friends call me Liv. My ba my enemies call me Doc Ock. And I love it later when Amy's anyway, like, oh, great. It's Liv. You're like, oh. But these friends are more than friends. Mm -hmm. Given how Aunt May and Otto were in the comics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I could see that. Why is it that I can see those two had a thing at once? Yeah, I can see that. Be it friendship or romance. Mm -hmm. Because Aunt May, she's not that old. Yeah. But, um, but eventually that eventually also leads them to, um, I, I guess I also love it. The moment they review everything, she's just like, we gotta go to the shed. You know, she's mm -hmm. just, just like, I know exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. And then we meet up to the other spider man Spider-Man Noir, Penny Parker, and Peter Porker. Spider yes. Ham. And they were just as good. Underutilized compared to the other three, but they we got enough from them. Mm -hmm. If you had to pick the one, what would, of those three was your favorite? I would have to say Penny, as yep. much as my bias would want me to say Spider Ham because that's John Mulaney. Yep. I'd uh, say that Penny just kind of stood out more. But especially me. how they kept the anime look to her. Yes, this I love it. wide how they... eye and it, her expression like, yeah. Yep, yeah, but I'd also say Nicolas Cage nailed it at Spider-Man Noir. Yeah, yes, he just said yes, all this did. stuff so straight. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're just seeing some bits of them right here. Just seeing Penny again, just like this. Yeah. And oh, her pet spider. Her pet spider. And the robot. Which the robot got destroyed. You're like, no. Mm -hmm. But. I love how the writing in this, okay, it does speed along. It doesn't stop. Even when it slows down, it's not stopping. Mm -hmm. But there's all the characterization makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. Although I got to say, it took until this new movie, because originally I was not a fan of what happened to Uncle Aaron, just getting mm -hmm. shot once it was revealed. He was the prowler, but then once he finds out it's Miles, he gets shot down by Kingpin. I did not like that first. But now that I know that that's actually a key part in the next movie, it makes sense. It's his uncle. It's his Uncle Ben moment. Mm hmm But we don't realize that. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, it's, he's filling in the Uncle Ben moment. Mm hmm And then, but then I love also the others are willing to, Peter B's willing to sacrifice himself for the others. Why? Because Miles isn't ready, and he isn't ready in that moment. Yeah, it's like he's not wrong in that moment, but it's also clear this man has a death wound. Oh, yeah, he has a death wound because he broke up with MJ. His wife's been in the shitter. He wants to die. Mm -hmm. He has been that depressed that once he sees this opportunity to die, he's ready to take it. Mm -hmm. And but, but the fact also that, like I said, when he makes the point, they're like, okay, if you want to do it, if you think you're ready, to, um, to, and go invisible on commands. Um, Venom shock me. Do something to get out of this. And Miles can't. He's like, but then his dad shows up. Now Miles is webbed up and everything, so he can't say or do anything. Um, but his father gives him a speech, which it's one of the few clunky moments. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you agree? Like, it's a touching moment. But the fact that that's the moment where Miles, the switch is flipped. Mm -hmm. That felt a little clunky, didn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, not bad clunky, because it's a great moment. But when you sink back, you realize, yeah, that's all it took with him saying, I'm just waiting for that spark. Mm -hmm. And then boom, that spark comes. Yeah. That felt, I mean, how did you feel seeing that? Hmm. Again, touching moment. But you know what I mean, right? Like the fact that it leads immediately to him. Like, woohoo, woohoo, woo yeah, 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 I know what to do. Uh, yeah, I can see what you mean there. Again, it's not bad. And his dad's a great character in all this. Oh, there is no bad character in this. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have Peter B. being a jerk at first, but to be honest, Peter was a jerk in his early days. Mm -hmm. People forget that. He was a jerk. He wasn't the nice guy at first. Mm -hmm. But um, but then, of course, the big climax and everything was really good. Especially, and then you have, you have the point where Peter B. meets up with MJ. Mm -hmm. I, my facial expression was just like Gwen's, like, it's like, it's cringe, but it's very in character and understandable. Cringe. I know, but you're just like, why? And you're like, 
Yeah, you're just like that, like. Right? <laughs> just like. Uh, then he's able to. He gets out of his system. And, you know, things just go on from there. Right? And he's able to. They're able to make their way down. They into this big, great climax. Dealing with um, Doc, uh, Doc Ock and Scorpion. And Tombstone definitely got the worst of this. Because Tombstone's going to be this nearly unstoppable guy here. He's just a mook. So we're saying with Green Goblin, but um, but again, the, they you know they're able to lead to a great a great fight with Doc Ock, take her down, and then they um, use the Goober to, to um, reverse everything. And I do like how you need to get him all the way, but the fact that Peter B was ready to stick around, mm -hmm. he was ready to stick around. It took him to say like, what did he say? He said like, what if I screw up? I mean, what, how do I know I won't mess up? You won't. Mm -hmm. It just takes a leap of faith. Yeah. I love that whole scene. Oh, we didn't even mention the leap of faith scene is still the highlight of the movie. Oh, yeah. Would you agree with that? Like, that whole sequence was the yeah. highlight. that was awesome. Right down to hit the glass still breaking because he did, you know, he was still gripping on. Mm-hmm. Seriously, the animation got all this. And you know what funny thing is? I kept expecting to notice the little skipping frame stuff. I didn't. Neither did I. I know it's there. Mm -hmm. It happens in some of the action, but it's not as like well, yeah. When you like we're seeing this right now, when yeah. we're seeing him running, that's when you notice it. When it's normal action, you don't see it. When they're swinging on stuff, that's when you see the slight choppy, but intentional choppy. Mm -hmm. You know where they they skip every other frame. Uh huh. I believe that's what uh, what they do. They skip. They cut a frame. Yeah. But again, we he takes down King Ben. Day is saved and everything. And again. We're just summarizing this movie, but you go on. Tell more about what you thought. I sort of knew some of, like, the wider plot points from it, so I didn't go in entirely blind. I sort of knew about <coughs> who Doc Ock was and who the Prowler was, but other than that, just seeing everything come together the way it did was just, ah, it was fantastic. Yep, but again, all of the characters, everyone shine. Everyone mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like, I, I knew it was good. I knew it was going to be good. I just couldn't have guessed just in what way. Yep, and like I said, by the time there's any uh, any type of, you know, um, clunky moments, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't take away that much. Like, how did his dad get down to see uh, the big fight with him in Kingpin? Who cares? It doesn't matter, because it fits. Exactly, exactly. And by the end of it all... This is still one of the best comic book movies I've ever <laughs> seen. Indeed. It is still better than most of the MCU. Mm-hmm. Would you agree with that? Like, okay, it's where does this, where does this rank compare to Guardians? Hmm. That is a very good question. Or is it hard to compare the two? It's hard to compare the two because not only just are their day are different mediums, but they're trying to do very different things. So it kind of feels unfair to compare them. True. But, um, but I guess the cast on this was all great. Mm -hmm. Like I said, Catherine Hahn just stole the show every time we see her top. But again, Nicolas Cage is just, again, so many of the cast. And we're seeing them right now on the stuff here. But it is just so good. Even Miles' dad, I just love him in this, don't you? It's just mm -hmm. this, like, he means well, but, you know. Yeah. But yeah, overall, see this movie if you guys still haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. and it's never too late to see it, and it's pr better than now. Exactly. Especially, although I do say, see it before the next movie. Yes, yeah, see it before you watch the sequel. Yep, and we'll let you guys know when we get to well, Again, you guys will have seen it by this point. We don't know how well it's going to do, but I'm sure future us well. Mm -hmm. Or past us, whatever. Time is weird. Wibbly wobbly timey wimey. But yeah, we'll see you guys on the other side. And later. Take care.